purpose of existence and creation. What is the purpose of existence and creation? It is said God is the creative process. I say it. God is the creative process. Then why are things created? What is the purpose of creation? Or is it something that just exists? This is a question. You said that God is the creative process. Then why are things created? And what is the purpose of creation? Or is it just something that just exists? If God exists as a person, then question why becomes relevant. Remember this, if God exists as a person, then the question why becomes relevant. If God is a person, then we can certainly ask why have we created the world? But God is not a person. God is a process. You cannot ask the process, why do you exist? It is the process of creativity. Sarajan ki prakriya, the process of creativity, the process of creation. Existence exists without cause. Thinking in terms of cause leads nowhere. But man thinks always in terms of cause and effect. If you go beyond one cause, another pops up. If you go beyond that, then another cause props up. And this process continues at long, without a break. And the why remains always and endlessly. Why this? Why that? The question of why always remains. You ask why and again and again you are confronted with another why. There is no end to whys. If God is a person, then the why becomes relevant. But God is not a person. You cannot ask Him. You are Him. You yourself are the cause. The existence is uncaused. This is why Hindus say the creation is a play and the play is for the entertainment, no other cause. Otherwise you will have to invent ultimate causes, but that carries no meaning. If you say that there is an ultimate cause, it means that beyond a certain point you will not Again ask what the cause is. Even a person who believes in God as the creator and says God created the world may invent whys and answers. But if you ask him why is there God, why does he exist, the religious person cannot give any satisfactory answer or will say God is uncaused. He is the cause. So He is uncaused. Remember the existence itself is uncaused for no purpose. At the beginning there was, there is no cause, so is the end. There can be no purpose either. Only when there is a cause for something, then it is followed by a purpose. There is no beginning because if there is a beginning, then there must be a cause. Existence is beginningless and there is no end because the beginningless cannot come to an end. It is endless. So there is neither a beginning nor an end to existence. That is why it is eternal uncaused, without any purpose. It exists today. There is no point go into the beginning or the end of it. Just celebrate where you are and you see the plants in front of you, celebrate the plants. You will go beyond. 
For the human mind it is meaningless to say that this because mind always thinks in terms of cause from where and in terms of purpose to what end. Cause implies from where and purpose implies to what end, what is why, what is the reason. Because of this limitation of human mind, he cannot conceive of something that is beginningless, endless, uncaused and purposeless. Mind cannot conceive this at all. But how can there be any cause and how can there be any purpose? To be is enough. To have been is enough. Being indeed is enough. You can think of it in another way, through another outlook. When you love someone, do you ask what is the cause of it? If love is caused by something, it ceases to be love. Love flowers uncaused. If a cause could be pointed out, then the beauty of love is lost. Then there would be a scientific explanation for it. You cannot ask what love is for, can you? There is no purpose in love. If I love you, I cannot ask why. If I love you for some reason, then it is not love. Love is always purposeless, just it is there. In love we come closest to God. That is why Jesus said God is love. It is not that God is loving, no. That is not the meaning. God is love. In love you come closest to the creative process. And God is the creative process. That is why love is so closest to God. Love is the peak from which we come to know what religion is. Love is the peak from which we come to know what religion is. Love is the door to religiousness and totality. Love is the ultimate. Love is religious, so a person who cannot love cannot pray either. person who cannot love cannot be religious either. He can pretend to be. Only a loving mind can be religious because only a loving mind can think in terms of no purpose, no cause. But we have made love a purpose. Love is enough unto itself. It does not ask anything beyond itself. It is a fulfillment in itself and end in itself too. A single moment of love is eternity itself and fulfillment unto itself. If you have experienced a single moment of love, you will not ask for another. That is enough. When we ask why, where, how, we are not asking religious questions. If you ask how, the question becomes scientific because science revolves around how. The question, how is the basis of science? How are things happening? And if you ask why, the question becomes philosophy. Out of why, philosophy is born. And religion is neither philosophy nor science. It is either both or none. Religion has no question. For religion there is no question, instead there is a quest. There is a difference between question and quest. In, instead of questioning, there is quest but no question. There is a quest to know what is, neither why, nor how, or what is. There is a quest to know what is, Neither why nor how, instead what is. What is leads you to the religious domain. Of course, to solve the question how it is easier. We can go on solving and solving and there will be no end to it. 
every solution will again create a problem. The how will again be encountered. So science will go on progressing. You cannot conceive of a day when scientists will come out of their laboratories and see and see. Now science has achieved. Science has reached its ultimate norm. Science means a continuous a perennial discovery. Philosophers will go on thinking and thinking why and there will be as many answers as there are thinkers. If everybody on the earth begins to think about it, there will be millions and millions of answers. Everybody can say because of this or that, but religion does not ask a question. Religion is a quest, not a question. And there is a vast difference between the two. Question comes from the mind, and quest comes from deep within your heart. Religion is a quest after what is, not after the beginning and not after the end. It is a quest for neither the cause nor the purpose. Instead for that which is this very moment, now and here. And what is the quest? A scientific mind can go on searching without ever changing itself. A philosopher can go on inventing answers without changing even an iota. But a religious man cannot even begin without changing. The moment he begins to ask what is, there is a change, a transformation takes place because he himself is the part and parcel of what is. The moment you say what is, you are part and parcel of it. You are neither part and parcel of how, nor of the why. You were not asked anything in the beginning, nor have you been asked to plan for the end. You are somewhere in the middle, in the is. You are only concerned with what is here and now, this very moment. I am here now, I can answer what is now. I cannot say anything other than why this happened, why I did so, is irrelevant because that cannot bring transformation. I am here, you are here, we can reconcile, we can be together, but in the past we miss and in future it is not there. So religion is concerned with the present, neither with the past nor with the future. And the present is the only existence. The present is only time. Past is memory and future is imagination. The present is the only reality, the only existence. Religion is concerned with all that is existential. Neither the memory nor imagination is existential. It appears to be, but it is not. Religion is concerned with the existential, the purposeless, the meaningless and the uncaused. Things are and you can become one with them and can achieve a moment of bliss. The tree is there, you can be with it. The wife, the husband is here, you can be with her or him. And there will be a moment of bliss, a moment of pure existence, a moment of total consciousness. Hindus have called this state as Satchit Anam. Sat means truth, Chit means awareness, consciousness and anand means bliss. Truth, awareness and bliss. The moment and this is the moment of totality, the moment of existence, the moment of total consciousness, the moment of total bliss, the ultimate. 
once you have a glimpse of it, there will be no question and no problem. You will be at ease with the reality. Then you will be in a state of let go with the reality. You will flow with it and live with it. You will breathe it and you will be one with it. Simply you will be. This is the way. Therefore never ask how or why. Simply be available to the moment. Simply be available to this very precise moment to now and be here. You will attain to that which is. You will attain to a state of truth because this is the truth. Now and here is the truth. And this is consciousness as well because the moment you realize, you understand, you flow with now and here, you are consciousness. And when these two things, truth and consciousness, merges together, out of this bliss is born. Then you are blissful or you are very embodiment of a scriptural injunction, Sat Chit Anand. Truth, awareness and bliss.